Well, hello there, and welcome back to our fifth video in the project management dive uh, for Project Plus. So we're going to be covering domain one, project management concepts, 33%, and bullet point 1.5, given a scenario, perform issue management activities. So these are coming right from, um, if I can get my mouse over, sweet, uh, right from CompTIA's Project Plus Certification Exam Objectives. I'll link to this down below. Um, and like I said, we're in domain one right here, Project Management uh, Concepts, 33% of the exam, and we're on 1.5. So that's this uh, section here. Okay, let's go. So we're going to be talking about issue management activities, right? Uh, issue management activities. So you have to understand roles and responsibilities. Um, who do you escalate to when a problem occurs? Which problem goes to what teams? And at what point in time do they need to be escalated higher? Who's the owner of a specific track when issues come up? Owners should ensure that proper documentation, updates, and resolution will be will be given and that should be defined in a defined time frame issue tracking there should be a recording of the management issues until they are resolved and it should be regularly reviewed during meetings um, there's this exists in almost all the tools that are are out there for project management although I've even seen this just done on an Excel spreadsheet so you don't need a special tool. You just need to know the item description, the priority level, usually low, medium, high, critical, um, owner, the assigned team, the resolution deadline when it needs to be resolved by, and status updates. Um, is it in progress? Is it resolved? Maybe we're ignoring it. Uh, sometimes there's good reasons to to let an issue fester for a bit. Other times you don't. So one of the things with issues, oftentimes with issues, we have to address it. In addressing it, we change the project. In changing the project, that might add maybe additional time. Well, by adding additional time, we might eat into when people were going to start taking vacation. Um, and that can cause additional issues. So we've got to be careful. Changes to the project can cause additional issues, which cause additional changes. It's, it can snowball. So make sure that you're maintaining a change control log. It's clearly documented. Once again, this can be in Excel or it can be in a specialty tool. And you're communicating those. Continuing on, you need to have a resolution plan, a way to um, implement the solution and ensure it doesn't reoccur. There might be predefined contingencies that are activated with certain issues. If you don't understand what fully happened, you probably should do a root cause analysis if time allows. Root cause analysis can be as simple as just asking the five whys. Why did this happen? Okay. Why did that happen? Okay. Why did that happen? To try and get as deep as you can to solve the root of the problem so it doesn't happen again. There's also the fishbone diagram that can be used for this. Root cause analysis is it, its own um, training. Uh, there are specialty organizations that focus just on root cause analysis. You should prioritize your issues. Um, it can be prioritized in many ways, so severity how critical it is. What is the impact to the project is another way. How urgent 
is it? How fast does it need to be resolved? Uh, what is the scope of it? How many people does it affect? Um, sometimes it'll exceed the authority of the project team and need to be escalated. For example, if your project has a specific budget, sometimes there's a percentage overage that's allowed. Well, if the issue causes you to exceed that, you now need to escalate for approval to exceed that budget. And the last thing in this section is make sure you document. Document the issue, document the process of coming to the resolution, document the change log, uh, the changes to the change log, the lessons learned, the stakeholder communication, uh, everything, just document it so that you have uh, stuff to refer back to to better understand how to uh, do things next time so that you don't curse your former self. Um, I often uh, go to do something and realize I didn't document it well enough and now I have to re-remember what I've forgotten and that's when I curse my former self. Anyway, so uh, that's the end of 1.5. I hope you've enjoyed this and we'll see you in the next video, which will be 1.6. Have a good one.